Check this out. I actually put the Hack RF to work here on the main shelf. I should have done this a long time ago and just had this sitting here and able to run when I want it to. It's pretty cool. This looking glass application within the new firmware is pretty neat for just a, a quick look into any frequency they've got kind of a few different variations like uh, presets so to speak bluetooth wi-fi 433 megahertz kind of neat and i finally went ahead and made a spot for my baofeng radios up here uh, the uv3r i have to get a replacement batteries inbound from british columbia because that one just was right flat dead but the 5r is still working wonderful and uh, yeah i'm pretty happy if you want to see some more hardware hacking and, and rf hacking on uh, with the software defined radio i'd like to to actually uh, get that radio sound working and that might be a little bit fun but let me know if you guys are into such things uh, i'm gonna do it but i might not video it all the other gear is just doing the business i'm happy with how the workbench is coming along i'm able to do these projects and get through them pretty quickly and i have the gear that i need and the things that i want and it just makes me a happy place I also want to get these pieces cut before I take a chance changing that power supply, just in case something bad happens. So this is why I wanted to do my cutting before I went to change that power supply. I had no idea this was going to happen, but I suspected something bad could. When I went to take the high voltage line off, the end of the tube shattered instead of the HV line coming off. So not ideal. She's toast. That is the end of that laser tube. It did give me a lot of use, but it's really too bad. It's a $230 touch. So be it. So Amazon to the rescue and uh, pop that out of there and swap it out. Interesting enough, I didn't even know this, but sure enough, my hold downs are shattered. This one is broken too. There's nothing holding this tube in place. That may explain why I had focus issues once in a while. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, one of those things when I don't get back here and don't take a close look at things, that very well was likely cracked from arrival. I'll have to go back and look at the videos. That's crazy. They're definitely shattered. I don't know whether these are 3D printed or not, but I can tell you they're gonna be. <laughs> Okay, the day wasn't a total loss. I finally got around to fastening this <laughs> regulator properly instead of those pop rivets that were way, way, way too small. I don't know whether I'm gonna change the power supply right now or wait. I think I'll wait just to see how the cathode connection is. The anode is no problem. That's the one that broke already. Tube's ordered. Let's see what happens. It'll be here in a couple of days, so we. Christmas time again in the lab. PCB order arrived from PCB way. Hopefully a new stencil non-framed this time. Very cool. So the stencil is what we use to spread our paste on the new printed circuit boards. That's my disky panel, which should hopefully have PCBs that are properly routed this time with my cool Saturn V uh, silk screen. Pretty happy about that. Got some stickers and another pen and uh, we'll assemble these. Did I mention how much I love how these boards came out? That is just so cool. Uh, this is going to be neat to know that that's down inside the diski. And I have a cool idea for my next set of boards from PCBWay. I'm going to put some of my patrons right on my silk screen, I think. I think that would be super cool because I've already planned to put my patrons inside the project and uh, put their names in, in some of the builds. I think it'd be super cool to have it right on the PCBWay. CBs. What do you think? Finally gonna put these Wii balance boards to work. Five dollars a piece ones that I got at the local used store and I've been printing more of these wire hangers. I'm obsessed with this lately. You'll see what I've been up to in the lab but these things are just great and they spawned me to get even more test probes and stuff so that I can just work easier in the lab. This little corner has now become my diagnostics corner and uh, this is where I'm putting all my leads and doing separate ones for power supply, measurement, coax and probe leads and then I'll have all my jumpers down at the end. Which is pretty cool. Uh, not much but it's mine and it makes me happy. Also, doing a quick little review on this new uh, multifunction tester, which is very similar to the one I have back there, but new and improved, rechargeable. Pretty cool.
if you have any 3D printer, you should give a try of some flexible filament. This TPU is just awesome. And even a printer like the i3 can do it. You just have to print it super, super slow. But this will be a pretty cool new case. Little bit of sport material and a few tiny little stringies, nothing to it. And then we have a wicked new case. I just replace these every, I don't know, four to six months or so, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just dirty. It's just gungy looking. They get this staining that uh, just can't seem to be cleaned off because, well, it's 3D printed. But uh, it's still in fine condition. There's nothing wrong with that. Perfect, actually. There's nothing wrong at all. For the price of basically nothing, we can just 3D print a new one. Let me just slide that right up in there. Perfect fit. Even got rigs on there. That is just awesome. I like the red. I, I alternate from red to blue. I like the blue very much too, but uh, the red's super cool. It's got a little iridescence to it. Ready to rock. Things happening overseas. I fired up the good old decimeter just to keep an eye on things. And uh, I'm happy to report background radiation is exactly what it always is here, about uh, 0.11-ish microsieverts an hour. So that's about background for here. Okay, it arrived. This is the new tube. Hopefully we can put it in where that one's laying loose and not break it. Fingers crossed. Pretty simple install, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, we win. We have a laser, I believe. We can get you into position. We have a very nice colored laser beam. And we're away to the races. So that's the new power supply in, all hooked up. That is working. Ha! Ah. We've got a good looking laser beam. If it doesn't, it resets my phone. So that's about all we can do. Otherwise it's gonna crash my iPhone again. <laughs> it doesn't like the HV that close, <laughs> but we're alive. And we're back in business. Cutting acrylic, no power required, and we should be in good shape. It's kind of strange. If I turn the power up, I can still hear that overdrive sound of the laser. The same as my old power supply and old tube. All right, this, uh, without even showing on the gauge, this is cutting the needlepoint precision through to the point where they're hard to remove. No issues. I like this new tube. These are for the bus pirate. Hopefully I got the right size this time. Yeah, we're good to go. All righty, so I got this Vanco tablet that I got ages ago, and this thing died. Um, so I never did review it. I'm just gonna see if I can fix it. The, there's no dis no touch screen display, it just quit responding and I've tried factory resetting and all kinds of things. I think that's the touch screen I see and I'm just gonna try reflowing that just for giggles. No joy, still dead. It's worth a try though. I think what happened was when I plugged my boroscope into this, I think that's when it failed. And I assume it was an overdraw on the USB and something cooked. I don't see any obvious signs of anything destructed through the microscope. And 
it's hardly worth spending any time on it. These tablets aren't worth anything, but it was worth a try to try that. 